Walking packs a major health benefit to us humans. It can help curb stress eating and even help prevent things like breast cancer. But we aren't the only ones that benefit or get a boost from a daily walk. Daily walks can really help improve your dog's overall mental and physical well-being. Yet 41% of pet parents don't actually make it a part of their dog's daily routine. This is Blue Ivy, and I'm Sarah Andreco, a certified dog behavior consultant. And in this video, we're gonna explore how to make walks a part of your daily routine and the benefits behind them. But first, let's start with what might be holding you back. Pet parents cite a variety of reasons when it comes to getting those walks in with their pup. Like, my dog is reactive to other dogs and distractions. My dog is older, or my older dog can't keep up with my younger dog. My dog can run in our backyard instead. Between work and family responsibilities, I just don't have time to walk them. Or one of my favorites, I don't think my small dog even needs to go for a walk. While all of these might seem like valid reasons to forego daily walks with your dog, your pup is missing out on some serious benefits that can help them lead happier, healthier lives. Let's talk about the amazing benefits to walking your dog. Now, walking your dog can do a lot more than just accommodate a potty break. There are many benefits to taking regular strolls with your dog, like better mental wellness. Your dog's cute, curious nose takes in lots of information while you're out on walks. Walks provide many opportunities for learning, critical social exposure, and confidence-boosting experiences. Lowering your dog's risk for diabetes, daily walks actually help the muscles in your dog more efficiently utilize both glucose and insulin. This decreases their risk for diabetes because it helps stabilize those blood glucose sugar levels. Lower risk for obesity. Obese dogs aren't getting enough exercise to support the amount of food that they're consuming. And daily walks can give your dog the physical activity that they need to stay healthy and stay in shape. Slowing down degenerative disease. So forming strong and healthy muscle tissue, both through exercise and nutrition, can help support and protect bones as well as improve overall joint health. Reducing idiopathic seizures. So stress and sleep deprivation are two of the most commonly reported seizure precipitating factors in dogs. Walking your dog lowers their stress and aids in more restful sleep. Now that you know the whys behind walking your dog, let's talk about how to make it happen. Set realistic attainable goals. So for example, if you haven't been walking once a week, you don't wanna start off by trying twice a week every day for seven days straight. Instead, set a more realistic expectation. Start with a concise and practicable goal. For example, start off with one 10 minute walk per day. Now after you've been able to meet that goal for two weeks straight, then ask yourself the following questions to know whether to pull back or to move even further into your walks with your dog. The first being, can I keep this up for the next six months? The second would be, did I bite off more than I can chew? Do I maybe need to take it a step back to really make this habit stick? And then the third thing is, can I do it more frequently than I'm currently doing it? Take the time to make the habit stick. Treat walking your dog like any other scheduled task that you have. So if you make time for your hangouts with friends or your haircuts, and that's enough to be solidified on your schedule, then prioritizing time with your dog should be a no-brainer. If scheduling time to walk with your dog is just not a possibility right now due to life circumstances, or if you're like 32% of survey respondents that said they cancel walks out of sheer laziness, do yourself a favor and hire a dog walker. Here are five pro tips to make the most of your walks. Remember those barriers that we covered earlier on in the video? Follow these tips to help make it stick. Number one, if you happen to have a reactive dog, if your dog is constantly responding and reacting and going over threshold to other people or other animals in the environment, you're gonna wanna seek help from a behavior professional, but in the meantime, think about your route. Take your dog out to a wide open field or an area where all those distractions are far off in the background and put your dog on a 30 foot long line. Allow your dog to explore that environment from the confidence of the distance away from those distractions. Reward them with a treat when they give you voluntary eye contact or come back in for a comfort check. Number two, older dog, modify your routine. Old dogs, senior dogs, still need exercise. Yes, even if they don't move quite like they used to. And if that's the case, you're gonna wanna talk to your veterinarian about potentially adding in some joint support supplements to their diet, like native pet relief chews. These chews have joint-boosting natural ingredients with anti-inflammatory properties like green lip muscle and turmeric. 
If you have an older dog and a younger pup, try taking them on walks separately more frequently throughout the week. Taking more casual strolls is really beneficial for your older dog and they can get lots of that good, helpful sniffing in along the way. Number three, know your breed and walk accordingly. Do you have a brachiocephalic dog, like one of those dogs with those cute little squishy faces? Well, English Bulldogs, Boston Terriers, Shih Tzus, French Bulldogs, these are brachiocephalic dogs and they have a less than ideal airway. That means they have a higher propensity for things like heat stroke, respiratory distress, and dehydration. So those long strolls or extended walks might not be the safest option for your dog. Now, if that sounds like your pup during the warmer months, walk your brachiocephalic dog during the morning or evening when it's cooler out to prevent things like dehydration and overheating. Number four, don't deprive your little guy. Yes, even those teacup chihuahuas will experience great major health benefits from getting exercise outside of your home and outside of your yard. Social exposure and training really boosts confidence and helps stave away some of those small dog behavior issues that we see that are related to things like fear and anxiety. Now, if you haven't been walking your little dog, start with short walks to help get them acclimated and then you can start adding a little more and a little more over time to get them used to it. Number five, ask your vet what is best. Keep in mind that things like breed, age, coat conditions, and even health conditions all play a role or influence what the best daily walking routine is gonna look like for you and your dog. Talk with your vet for guidance on creating a walking plan based on your pup's unique needs and abilities. While it would be lovely to take long three hour walks with our dogs, that's not just always feasible for everyone, or for every dog for that matter. When it comes to goal setting for dog walking, focus on quality over quantity and frequency over distance. Your health and your dog's health depend on it, not to mention your happiness too. For more tips on keeping your dog happy and healthy, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the Native Pet blog. You ready, Blue? Let's go!